Joseph Wheeler was an American military commander and politician. He has the rare distinction of serving as a general during wartime for two opposing forces. First as a noted cavalry general in the Confederate States Army in the 1860s during the American Civil War, and later as a general in the United States Army during both the Spanish-American War and Philippine-American War near the turn of the 20th century. For much of the Civil War he served as the senior cavalry general in the Army of Tennessee and fought in most of its battles in the Western Theater. Between the Civil War and the Spanish-American War, Wheeler served multiple terms as a United States representative from the state of Alabama. Early life Although of New England ancestry, Joseph Wheeler was born near Augusta, Georgia and spent most of his early life growing up with relatives in Connecticut. However, he was appointed to the United States Military Academy at West Point from the state of Georgia and always considered himself a Georgian and Southerner. Wheeler entered West Point in July 1854, barely meeting the height requirement at the time for entry. He graduated on July 1, 1859, placing 19th out of 22 cadets, and was commissioned a brevet second lieutenant in the 1st U.S. Dragoons. He attended the U.S. Army Cavalry School located in Carlisle, Pennsylvania, and upon completion was transferred on June 26, 1860, to the Regiment of Mounted Rifles stationed in the New Mexico Territory. It was while stationed in New Mexico and fighting in a skirmish with Indians that Joseph Wheeler picked up the nickname Fighting Joe on September 1. 1860, he was promoted to the rank of second lieutenant. Civil War Early service at the start of the Civil War, Wheeler entered the Confederate Army on March 16 as a first lieutenant serving in the Georgia State Militia Artillery, and then was assigned to Fort Barrancash off of Pensacola, Florida, reporting to Marge, Gen. Braxton Bragg. His resignation from the U.S. Army was accepted on April 22, 1861. Wheeler and the 19th Alabama fought well under Bragg at the Battle of Shiloh in April 1862. During the Siege of Corinth in April and May, Wheeler's men on picket duty clashed repeatedly with Union patrols. Serving as acting brigade commander, Wheeler burned the bridges over the Tuscumbia River to cover the Confederate withdrawal to Tupelo, Mississippi. Middle Tennessee Wheeler transferred to the cavalry branch and commanded the 2nd Cavalry Brigade of the Left Wing in the Army of Mississippi from September to October. During the Kentucky Campaign, Wheeler aggressively maintained contact with the enemy. He began to suffer from poor relations with the Confederacy's arguably greatest cavalryman, Nathan Bedford Forrest. When Bragg reassigned most of Forrest's men to Wheeler, sending Forrest to Murfreesboro to recruit a new brigade, Wheeler fought at the Battle of Perryville in October and after the fight performed an excellent rearguard action protecting the Army's withdrawal. He was promoted to Brigadier General on October 30 and led the cavalry belonging to the 2nd Corps of the Army of Tennessee from November to December. During action at Laven, Tennessee, on November 27, Wheeler was wounded by an artillery shell that exploded near him. In December 1862, the Union Army of the Cumberland began to advance from Nashville against Bragg's army and Wheeler, now commanding all of the Army of Tennessee's cavalry, skirmished aggressively to delay their advance. He drove into the rear of the Union Army, destroying hundreds of wagons and capturing more than 700 prisoners. After the Battle of Stones River, as Bragg's army withdrew to the Duck River line, Wheeler struck the Union supply lines at Harpeth Shoals on January 12, 13, burning three steamboats and capturing more than 400 prisoners. Bragg recommended that Wheeler be promoted as of just reward, and he became a major general on January 20, 1863. Wheeler led the Army's cavalry corps from January to November 24, then again from December to November 15, 1864. 
For his actions on January 12, 13, 1863, Wheeler and his troopers received the thanks of the Confederate Congress on May 1, 1863. In February, Wheeler and Forrest attacked Fort Donelson at Dover, Tennessee, but they were repulsed by the small Union garrison. Forrest angrily told Wheeler, Tell, General Bragg, that I will be in my coffin before I will fight again under your command. Bragg dealt with this rivalry in the Tullahoma campaign by assigning Wheeler to guard the Army's right flank while Forrest guarded the left. A Union cavalry advance on Shelbyville on June 27 trapped Wheeler and 50 of his men on the north side of the Duck River forcing Wheeler to plunge his horse over a 15-foot embankment and escape through the rain-swollen river. Chickamauga and Chattanooga Wheeler and his troopers guarded the army's left flank at Chickamauga in September 1863, and after the routed Union army collected in Chattanooga, Gen. Bragg sent Wheeler's men into central Tennessee to destroy railroads and federal supply lines in a major raid. On October 2, his raid at Anderson's Crossroads destroyed more than 700 Union supply wagons, tightening the Confederate siege on Chattanooga. Pursued by his Union counterparts, Wheeler advanced to McMinnville and captured its 600-man garrison. There were more actions at Murfreesboro and Farmington, but by October 9, Wheeler had safely crossed the Tennessee River at Muscle Shoals, Alabama. The extensive raid caused the mounted arm of the army to miss the battles for Chattanooga. Wheeler covered Bragg's retreat from Chattanooga following the Union breakthrough at Missionary Ridge on November 25 and received a wound in his foot. As his cavalry in Marge, Gen. Patrick Claiborne's infantry fought at the Battle of Ringgold Gap on November 27, Wheeler and his men also supported LT, Gen. James Longstreet's ultimately unsuccessful efforts during the Knoxville campaign from November 4 to December 23, 1863, Georgia and the Carolinas during Union Marge, Gen. William T. Sherman's Atlanta campaign Wheeler's cavalry corps screened the flanks of the Army of Tennessee as Gen. Joseph E. Johnston drew back from several positions toward Atlanta. In July, Sherman sent two large cavalry columns to destroy the railroads supplying the defenders of Atlanta. With fewer than 5,000 cavalrymen, Wheeler defeated the enemy raids, resulting in the capture of one of the two commanding generals, Marge, Gen. George Stoneman. In August, Wheeler's corps crossed the Chattahoochee River in an attempt to destroy the railroad Sherman was using to supply his force from Chattanooga. Wheeler's men captured the town of Dalton, but he was unable to defeat the Union garrison protected in a nearby fort. Wheeler then took his men into East Tennessee, crossing the Tennessee River above Knoxville. His raid continued to the west causing minor interruptions in the Nashville and Chattanooga Railroad and then continued south through Franklin until he recrossed the Tennessee at Tuscumbia. Wheeler's raid was described by historian Egbert as a Confederate disaster because it caused minimum damage to the Union while denying Gen. John Bellhood, now in command of the Army of Tennessee, the direct support of his cavalry arm. Without accurate intelligence of Sherman's dispositions, Hood was beaten at Jonesboro and forced to evacuate Atlanta. Wheeler rendezvoused with Hood's army in early October after destroying the railroad bridge at Resaca. In late 1864, Wheeler's cavalry did not accompany Hood on his Franklin-Nashville campaign back into Tennessee and was virtually the only effective Confederate forced to oppose Sherman's march to the sea to Savannah. However, his resistance to Sherman did little to comfort Georgia civilians and LAX discipline within his command caused great dissatisfaction. Robert Toombs was quoted as saying, I hope to God he will never get back to Georgia, Marge, Gen. D.H. Hill wrote that, the whole of Georgia is full of bitter complaints of Wheeler's cavalry. Wheeler and his men continued to attempt to stop Sherman in the 1865 Carolinas campaign. He defeated a Union cavalry force under Brig. Gen. 
Judson Kilpatrick at Aiken, South Carolina, February 11. He was replaced as cavalry chief by L.T. Gen. Wade Hampton and fought under him at the Battle of Bentonville on March 19, 20, 1865, while attempting to cover Confederate President Jefferson Davis's flight south and west in May. Wheeler was captured at Conyers Station just east of Atlanta. He had intended to reach the Trans-Mississippi and Gen. Edmund Kirby Smith, still resisting out west, and had with him three officers from his staff and eleven privates when he was taken. Wheeler was imprisoned for two months, first at Fort Monroe and then in solitary confinement at Fort Delaware, where he was paroled on June 8. During his career in the Confederate States Army, Wheeler was wounded three times, lost 36 staff officers to combat, and a total of 16 horses were shot from under him. Military historian Ezra J. Warner believed that Wheeler's actions leading cavalry in the conflict were second only to those of Bedford Forrest, U.S. Congress. After the war, Wheeler became a planter and a lawyer near Cortland, Alabama, where he married and raised a family. His home, Pond Spring, in an area now known as Wheeler, Alabama, is a historic site owned by the Alabama Historical Commission. In 1880, Wheeler was elected from Alabama as a Democrat to the United States House of Representatives. Wheeler's opponent, Greenback incumbent William M. Lowe, contested the election, and after a contentious legal battle which lasted over a year, Lowe was declared the winner and assumed the seat on June 3, 1882. Lowe, however, served only four months before dying of tuberculosis. Wheeler won a special election to return and serve out the remaining weeks of the term. Wheeler supported the election of Luke Pryor in 1882 and did not run for re-election, but was elected again in 1884, and re-elected to seven subsequent terms before resigning in 1900. While in Congress, Wheeler strove to heal the breach between the North and the South and championed economic policies that would help rebuild the Southern states. Spanish-American War. In 1898, Wheeler, now aged 61, volunteered for the Spanish-American War, receiving an appointment to Major General of Volunteers by U.S. President William McKinley. He assumed command of the Cavalry Division, which included Theodore Roosevelt's Rough Riders, and was nominally second in command of the V Corps. He sailed for Cuba and was charged with scouting for the U.S., advanced by General William Rufus Shafter, overall commander of V Corps. He was ordered not to engage the enemy on his own until the American troop disembarkation had been completed. Approaching Las Guasimas de Sevilla on June 24, American reports suggested the Spaniards were digging in with the field guns. However, Cuban scouts contradicted these, revealing the Spaniards were preparing to abandon the position. In fact, the Spanish troops at the position had received orders to fall back on Santiago. Wheeler requested the assistance of the attached Cuban forces in an immediate attack, but their commander, Carl Gonzalez Clavel, refused. Wheeler decided to attack anyway, rushing his men forward with two guns to the front, with Colonel Young's brigade leading the advance against the Spanish columns in what came to be called the Battle of Las Guasimas. The first major engagement of the war, during the excitement of the battle, Wheeler supposedly called out, Let's go, boys. We've got the damn Yankees on the run again. Wheeler's forces moved to encircle the Spaniards' first battle line, assaulting its front and right flank, but were repulsed. During a pause in the fighting, both sides reinforced their positions. The Spaniards sent forward two companies of the San Fernando Battalion, along with the artillery. After midday the U.S., the battle had cost U.S. forces 17 dead and 52 wounded, while Spanish forces suffered 7 dead and 7 wounded. Wheeler fell seriously ill during the campaign and turned over command of the division to Brig. Gen. Samuel S. Sumner. Wheeler was still incapacitated in July when the Battle of San Juan Hill began but once he heard the sound of guns, 
the war child returned to the front despite his illness. Being the senior officer present at the front he first issued orders to the 1st Division, under Jacob F. Kent before returning to his own command. Upon taking the heights, Wheeler assured General William R. Shafter that the position could be held against a possible counterattack. He led the division through the Siege of Santiago and was a senior member of the Peace Commission. Wheeler's youngest son died shortly after his return from serving in Cuba. He drowned while swimming in the ocean. When back in the United States, Wheeler commanded the convalescent camp of the Army at Montic Point, now a state park in New York. Philippine-American War Wheeler sailed for the Philippines to fight in the Philippine-American War, arriving in August 1899. He commanded the 1st Brigade in Arthur MacArthur's 2nd Division during the Philippine-American War until January 1900. During this period, Wheeler was mustered out of the volunteer service and commissioned a brigadier general in the regular army, both on June 16, 1900. After hostilities he commanded the Department of the Lakes until his retirement on September 10, 1900, and moved to New York. Supposedly while serving in the Philippines, Wheeler encountered an infantryman who was complaining about the heat and being tired. Wheeler promptly dismounted, took the man's rifle and pack, told him to mount his horse, and marched the rest of the way with the infantry. Later life Wheeler was the author of several books on military history and strategy, as well as about civil subjects. His first was a revised system of cavalry tactics, for the use of the cavalry and mounted infantry, CSA. In 1863, a manual that saw use by the Confederacy. His other works include, Fitz John Porter in 1883, the Santiago Campaign in 1898, Confederate military history. Alabama in 1899, and Report on the Island of Guam in 1900. Wheeler also co-wrote several more books throughout the rest of his life, the last of which, The New America and the Far East, a picture quire and historic description of these land and peoples, was published in 1907, after his death. Wheeler also appeared in an early film called Surrender of General Torrell with William Rufus Shafter. While attending the 100th anniversary celebration of the U.S. Military Academy in 1902, Wheeler approached the Old West Point Hotel, where his Confederate comrades James Longstreet and Edward Porter Alexander were seated on the porch. At the festivities Wheeler wore his dress uniform of his most recent rank, that of a general in the U.S. Army. Longstreet recognized him coming near, and reportedly said, Joe, I hope that Almighty God takes me before he does you, for I want to be within the gates of hell to hear Jubal early cuss you in the blue uniform. General Wheeler was a member of the Sons of the American Revolution and the Society of Colonial Wars. After long illness, Wheeler died in Brooklyn on January 25, 1906, at the age of 69. He is one of the few former Confederate officers to be buried within Arlington National Cemetery.